Oh, man. Okay, we're going to play a game called... Uh, I actually got... Um, I think I, I don't know if I got a code for this game. I think I did. But we're going to be playing the demo. Slovak Arts Council. Where birds go to sleep. Actually, I guess I want this at max volume. Is that too loud? Chat, how's the volume on the game? It's not too loud. Okay. So this is a, a possibly spooky game. It's at least atmospheric is uh, what the dev told me. I actually know like basically nothing about this game. Make no mistake, you've made your decisions. Every word you say, every thought acknowledged will plant a seed. Each gesture and inflection, no matter how insignificant, is a step that treads threads a clear path to a secret garden. There is a hidden cost, a chance for any inkling to root itself deeply, leave a mark. There is a bed of flowers made ready for you, for the moment when you eventually crumble under the pressure of life and lie down in the position assumed over and over again. When you fall back on the nature you've cultivated, your second nature. The moon's quite high today, isn't it? What day is it today, anyway? Oi, fella. We've been quiet for some time now, you know what I mean? What's your name? Find out what he's made of. Look at us, brother. <laughs> Two prisoners in a boat. There's a start of a joke. We don't have to talk. There's this joke. He probably won't like it. There's so there's this joke. You know, I have a feeling, yeah? An intuition. Call it whatever you want. But we'd go well together, you and I. Make a good team. Uh-huh. Like you know, hummus and bread would complement each other well. It's always two essential ingredients. Two vital things, yeah? Got two arms, two hands, two legs. But just one cock and one head. Now two heads is better than one, but two cocks. What? Are, where are we going with this? Depends on who you ask. <laughs> you can't disagree, can you? Where are we going with this? <laughs> hey, hey, relax. That was out of order, I know. But you should have seen your face, bro. <laughs> what was your name? Sorry. Dunley. Dunley. Darling, yeah? That's a, that's, that's a good name. Lovely name, mate. I'll enjoy saying it. Well, the prison guards told me your name. I know who you are. Tit. You fucking what? Tit. Like your mum's tit. <laughs> they must have uh, got me mixed up with someone. Name's Como. C O R O M. R-M-O. Yeah. Let's not get too familiar. Uh, yeah. You're right. But I reckon we should. That's the way we talk about. A week has passed since your arrival at the prison colony. The camp has been abandoned. There's no one here, not a single soul. Dunlin spends his uh, days looking out at the sea, awaiting the rescue party. Back home, your sister is ill. The cure is meant to be on this island. Find the missing people. Save your sister. 
A new thought entered your mind. Well, uh, Skyrim. Uh oh, guys. Kevbo said the word of the day. Bethesda. <laughs> Talk to Dunlin. Is this how you go around trudging around in the mud? What? What do you mean? You're not really dressed for the occasion, are you? Uh, he's just jealous. Well, I'm dressed to impress, yeah? If there was other people here, I'd be treated like a king just because I look it. Trust me, this is how the real world works, my friend. I can see you haven't had much experience. But don't worry, just watch and learn. If you say so. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, my friend. Ask about his occupation. So, Dunlin, I never asked you. What was your job before becoming a professional bellend? I'll have you know I worked close to the Myra on the higher levels of the sanatorium. <laughs> negative, negative one Subway sandwich, damn. Resolving the mysteries of air and vibration, uncovering the complex formulae and principles that elude words. But hearing them brings our hearts closer to the sky, or the sky closer to us. We haven't figured that one out yet. We made and played music, Kulma. Of course. Can't wait to hear some of your tunes. Thank you. Maybe later. I'm not having the best day. Hello, Dunlin. <laughs> what is it, Kuma? We talked not long ago. I'll be around. All right. See you later. This is a really interesting style. Approach the large bonfire. This massive pyre is made of raw, barely processed tree logs stacked on top of each other. It is a rough and instinctual moment erected for a singular purpose. How did they get the wood up? In the morning, of course. Prisoners awoke up at first light, daybreak, neck, break, speed. They used the slight incline of the beach to raise the logs with wedges for incremental support. Or a pulley? A set of ship ropes and 30 men at an angle. There's no knowing for sure, but they worked together. Despite their differences in blood or education, a dream for the machine of abuse. I, I really like the art, art and style, and, and the voice acting is actually really good. There are chairs around the pyre. Why? The prisoners drank and danced amongst their own. No, both prisoners and guards rev reveled and shared in their misfortune. It mattered little. All of them were swept away to this island like rubbish, and the salt-cured fish didn't taste any better for the guards or prisoners. In the last of daylight, they were like brothers, arm in arm, drunk of diluted wine made of bread and lemons. Sharing up made up stories of lives they haven't lived. Come morning they were property borns and knots, the way it's meant to be. Glass bottles littered around. The gleams and twinkles of broken glass perforate through the sand. The smell of alcohol has dissipated long ago. Alcoholic beverages are forbidden by the benefactory and should not be supplied, so what gives? Being an explorer is a miserable job. And so if by accident or mis mercy, a bar barrel or two find their way onto the supply boats, along with fruits that no one eats, but is instead used in wine brewing. You would know. The huge pyre was never lit. This is a signal fire. For when things go south, it's to be set alight, the smoke reaching into the higher app stratosphere. Letting all and sundry know what is happening here. The 
raging fire would touch the clouds, both bold and ferocious, polluting the night sky with hues of warmth. Would be seen from across the horizon, an unmistakable clue. What game is this? This is called The Birds... Uh... Where birds go to sleep. Good to know I can ask for help. When things go wrong and nothing else remains to be done, light this fire. Let the sky know you're alive and need help. It is sure to come. Notice something? I notice. I'm aware. Um, to the provision, pro provisory camp. Have a look at the smaller tent. There's a pair of putrid shoes on the floor pa placed neatly under a made bed. A single bed, unusual given the circumstances. There's a little bump under the blanket. There's a doll hidden under the blanket tucked underneath a shirt. Or so if a grown man sleeps with a doll. Put away. A new thought entered your mind. So I can access thoughts with M. A uh, primitive versatile tool that combines the handle of an axe with the blade of a machete. Its brutish top heavy momentum amplifies any swing tenfold. Even the slightest a swing is sure to cut through a branch as wide as a, th a thigh bone. Any material ensnared on the inside of the thick sickle blade will glide smoothly to the middle of the crescent, where it will give in to the forces that be. This is a forestry tool used for cutting wood. They, they couldn't just, like, settle with, like, this is a tool for cutting wood. They, they very much described that tool, and I appreciate that. Shireen's Locket. A memento to look at before going to sleep. A brass locket painted silver a long time ago. It houses a treasure, a prized possession, a dream. Cormo commissioned a portrait of his sister Shireen to be made on her 16th birthday. As her per tradition in the circles of all proper, properly borns of the benefactory. But Shireen is not born properly, and neither is Cormo. They rarely met, but he wanted only the very best for her, the things he had never had. Dreams and wishes fulfilled, always ready to be experienced vicariously in this locket in her face. Look her well and long in the eyes before you sleep. It always helps you dream well. Uh, Mayor Doll? What a striking idol. Body of a beautiful woman broken away from the mast of your boat. This being is a symbol of the mayor. Mayor, a perfect being connected, connecting the human with the sea above and below. Now the idol is ruined, forever worthless without its other half. The water reflects all. Every creature and thing on land or sea, sorry, land or sky, have their counterpart mirrored in the, in the water. Another you, another statue. We can only be complete when we meet in the sea. Just full transmutation. That thing you said to Dunlin? Hilarious. How can he ever recover? He should loosen up the self-important to Dunslin. It's just banter. A joke knocks on your mind uninvited, but unlike a dream, it has to be willed into existence by you. The most pathetic Jin Ornius descended at sunset to play mischievous tricks and suck on a child's thumb to sustain himself. Uh, last one, Ragged Doll. Bunch of, bundle of rags invoking the form of a man and a bit of nostalgia. The fabric is tough and crusty from salt, st strained by earthen colors. Sorry, stained by earthen colors. The filling and the insides have moved to unnatural places, a sign of years of use and abuse. Its disfigured head is particularly concerning, showing a blank expression of resignation. Abandoned. Its soul left with its owner. 
Hey Nerf, checking out this Cosmo tier. Good recommendation. Apparently has multiplayer. Yo. Probably just like PvP. Like sandbox PvP. We could sleep. Let's sleep. A single bed just for you. Go outside. Have a look at the smaller tent. The landing site is behind you. Let's look at, at the beach. To the right, the forest yawns lazily. The mild air whispers and caresses your clothes, dragging you towards the far rock. Come, come. I like how the text kind of like leans in to the screen here a little bit. Look at the far rock. The boulder a four minute walk's distance forms a natural pier. A look out at the sea would be a nice. Someone's there, on the far rock, waiting for you. Go to that far rock. There you are, my brave knights. Bravest of them all. I've been waiting for you for so long. Why did you make me wait? Who is she? Sister? Shireen. Hmm. Who's Shireen? No one, forget it. No one. Don't worry about it. You must be quite a no one to make a man like you whimper in his dreams. You make these little moans when you sleep. Did you know? Who the fuck are you? And who are you, brave knight? I asked first. <laughs> You're right. I'm Dahlia. And you, brave knight? Cormo. Cormo. <laughs> yeah. But that's not your name, is it? You can't know that. You remind me of... someone. A sailor. A harsh man, always so forward, a buffoon, never listened to anyone. Rings a bell? <laughs> That's my good friend, Hermine. Uh, yes, that was his name. You know him too? I uh, used to know him. We sailed together. We we're like brothers. But how? It's been fast 15 years since. Since he died by drowning. I never tell anyone. You tell yourself all the time, don't you? What? You're dreaming, brave knight. All men dream of women. Don't worry, there's nothing weird about it. I'm happy to play the role you choose for me, if it please you. Do I remind you of someone? Uh, no one in particular. I'm here, dear knight. You can tell me. Stay quiet, she doesn't need to know. You remind me of my mother, my sister, a woman I loved. Of a horror of no one. She doesn't need to know. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't be so stern. I know. This game's I called Where the Birds Sleep. A lie. It's getting quite dark now, and I'm a bit cold. I don't usually ask, but would you hold me for a moment? Refuse. No. Just watch the sun. It's warm enough. We could watch the sun submerge together. I can't. I, uh, I must be home by sundown. Mom would be angry. A pity. 
Then you better go, or you'll catch a cold. I'm sorry I scared you. I also don't trust easily. What was I thinking? I always say the wrong thing. We could have watched the sun submerge. The sun, its warmth, my dearest sun. Apparently, I can only apologize. I'm sorry. No, it's not a problem. It's just... It's dark now, and the cold hurts. But I thank you for your honesty, brave knight. The bravest of them all. It's cold. It's so cold. Dream on. Dream of the prison colonists or dream of pleasant things. Let's dream of pleasant things. This game has also kind of given me some uh, old Flash vibes. I want to get up. I want to go to work. Let me sleep. Take it easy. Take your time. I wish I could lie here forever. Uh, Raw right here if I have to. I can't just lie in bed forever. All right. Not forever. Just five more minutes. What would you prefer? Doing things on my terms. No one to boss me around. No pressure. Nothing would ever get done. And whatever gets done now, every man here, apart from the busybodies, but at the absolute minimum, and call it a day, this ship will reach its destination in spite of the crew. Not thanks to it. You chose this. For well, the money. But the money's not here. It's difficult to find reason to get up today when my bay is a moon away. And what a pitiful sum it is. If I couldn't smuggle the rare goods, this miserable torture wouldn't be worth it. Smuggling what? Depends. Depends on what's in demand. It's always stuff you can't get in Ugarit. Pagan jewelry, trinkets, Ornate pens, ornate penises made of antler bones for the ladies. Hmm? Right now, uh, aphrodisiacs. Why not? It's so hush hush in the higher society, but all the women need some fun too. I'm all about more opportunities for women. There will be a hundredfold return. That's the price. Of my trust. Ah, a step of a still moons away. Where is the ship headed? Ah, uh, to Vanator, of all places. Great place if you can stand the cold. It's not that cold, but um, it can't snow. Uh, I just can't wait for those cold mornings. <sighs> They have no birds this time of year. Mental. The birds all left south and then east. It's got more sense than the people. It's difficult to find a purpose for getting up. Uh, it is. But hold on. I'm not on a ship. I'm on this cursed island where they send men to die. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> At least I can sleep in peace on a proper bed. The bed, the smell of wet sand. Oh no, I'm waking up.
Yo, when dying on an island sounds more appealing than the drudge of capitalist society. Just want to experience this when I'm wakeful and not falling half asleep. Wake up. See you, bro. What the fuck was that? Follow him. That lady. That lady, is that you? He went to the landing. Camp is not the direction. Bonfire, bonfire, not there. Dunlin, Dunlin. There he is. He's quick. There are options not available to Darling, me. Not now. I'm in the middle of something. It might not have been him. Wait it out. Ten more seconds. You're trying to be funny, mate. How long do you plan to take? Because now is not the time. I'm in the middle of a prayer. Could whatever it is wait a minute? Of course, I understand. Of course. I understand. Of course I do. Which TF2 class is the most racist? In tears. Jesus Christ. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Nine tall fountains made of silver. In them, a white bird flock plays a song of I'm just, I'm just gonna wait. No, he just keeps going any minute now. You're trying to be funny, mate. How long do you plan to take? Because now is not the time. I'm in the middle of a prayer. Could whatever it is wait a minute? Politely disagree. Uh, yeah. Nah. Listen. I don't want to be improper. Mine was all due respect. Danlin, I saw. I don't fucking know what I saw, but you remember. Your station was here. I told you not to go around the camp. You had to watch the shore. Cormo? He's trying to tell me something. Yes. What is it? It wasn't me. Now, I want to finish my prayer. I, who was it then? Oh, you mental midget! <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about your fucking prayer? I just saw you outside the tent. You're telling me it wasn't you. Are you at it? I saw you. I saw you or someone in the camp. I've been watching the shore waiting for the other boat, as we agreed. <sighs> you know what? Never mind. What have you seen while I was gone? Nothing. Not even a single bird in sight. Just the water. The light refracts off its surface. The waves breaking the shapes. Of a large fish. A woman. A spider. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. Alan, do not go near that water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I see. Thanks. For nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I need I need to cap that face. <laughs> Absolutely fed up. Oi, bruv, you're gonna get us all killed.
You are too trusting. That's fine. Mistakes happen. Yeah. I hope you would just take my word for it. Why can't things be simple? Everyone assumes the worst of me. I'm not that bad, am I? Did I make a mistake by being so forward? Uh, we, we, we are not that forward. I did what I did. What he does now is his choice. You should be more careful next time. Maybe there was a better way of warning Danlin. I'm getting achievements, by the way. A new thought entered your mind. Several new thoughts. She who's always with you. My dear, what a mess they've made of you. I won't judge you. It will be all right. I will love you always. She who's always with you. Naivety. Why can't things be the way they should? On this earth, our feet are firmly planted while our heads float in the sky gracefully. Which is the world we see and the world we inhabit? To show ourselves in earnest with childlike innocence, we could dream together lying in the field in the place where dreams are made. Where things can change and we can be whoever we want to be. Can you see what I see? I believe it can happen. I know you can be who you want to be. This place may be terrible, but at least you don't have to get up with the sun and slave away for a pittance. Yeah. Unironically, literally what I said. An island of death is still more appetizing than, uh, you know, a day job. <laughs> there is a pair of putrid shoes on the floor. Yeah, we, we, we know that. outside uh have a look at the small tent or the wildly colored pavilion <laughs> oh. this great tent housed multiple convict explorers there are multiple beds trunks chests and chairs all around the pavilion along with makeshift floorboards and carpets it almost feels like a house but the stench in here is unbearable Oh, it smells horrid in here. Oh, I can't. <coughs> I can't. Leave. Uh, the beach to your right. The forest looms, a great wall of impenetrable fortress, staving off the salty soft breeze from the spreading sea, overlooked by a giant rock. There are shoes thrown about. Hundreds of shoes, along with some shirts and trousers, are left lying on the beach, moved in and out by the, the tide, an eerie sight. There's something else. Have you noticed? Notice now. Cormo's eye twitches. An odd tr tickle, a shiver crawls across the surface of his brain. You realize the shoes are all of vastly different sizes. Some of these shoes are very, very small. Midgets. The little people, always prancing around, making funny sounds and raising spirits. You can remember only ever seeing two of these peculiar people. The benefactory is known to abort those born crippled, deformed, or otherwise broken. Is this where they end up? Possibly. Women's shoes? These tiny shoes would fit women's feet. Only everybody knows no women were sent to this prison colony island. Why not? Exploring the unknown, uncharted lands is a dangerous and physically demanding work. The barely living conditions are dreadful, and amenities non-existent. You are expected to die here. Some lives are more disposable than others. Can that not... Can that be the reason? Properly borns don't care, man or women, a body is a body. 
The convicts sent to this cursed island are not people, they are bodies. Through their choices they have given up their humanity to become vermin. This is their chance to right their wrongs, their flesh to be used until expiration. The island rejects us. A lot of prisoners will die, consumed by this machine operation. But eventually, with enough blood spent, the island will give in. What wondrous occasion that will be. What's that sound? A wet crunch. Unbelievable. In the corner of his eye, Cormo sees... A hermit crab, the size of a fist, crawls out from a tiny leather boot, only to slide into another, slightly larger boot. Moments later, the boot sprouts long, spider-like legs and trots away towards the ocean. It begs the question, if you were to live in a shoe, where would you live? Uh, the front, of course. To think of it, it must be quite seedy by the front. It's always dark, stuffy, and very humid with the ever-present moisturized sweat. The smell must be indescribable. But no one would bother you there, or rather no one would bother you there. Bother with you there. We shouldn't bother either. A fascinating topic. Think of it next time you find some shoes around the camp. To the forest. Is there something I missed? I won't be back for a while. To the forest. Oh, we have like a map. Uh, schizotype, schizo, schizopathy. Schizotypy? I don't know what... Schizotypy? Skull barrier has been removed, and your brain pulsates to the outside world. It sends and receives frequencies of the most bizarre type. For the first time, you can feel the sun and its warmth on your gray matter. The tickle of the salty wind as it flows in this fissure between your hemispheres. Thank you for playing. What? Please consider filling out the feedback form. What? That was sudden. Kindly wishlist the final game if you haven't already. Well, I think you just skipped exploring the beach. Yeah, I think you're right. And unfortunately, I don't see myself being able to get back there without um, going through a lot of the dialogue again. Well, that's a game I'm going to have to play the full version of for sure. That um, That is very good. Excellent to you either. I told you so. Oh. Uh, yeah, that that was very good. So what what do we got in the full version? Choices matter. There is no mission failed. Saying no opens new avenues. There is no golden path. Lie to others and you'll be more likely to hide the truth from yourself. Fail to justify your actions and you might find your character not hit. Heeding your commands. Every single small choice you make builds up and shifts the direction of the story. While there are crucial moments and big decisions to be made, it is the small things that, true to life, ultimately decide who we are. Reflect on your actions along with the protagonist. Exchange your thoughts on what happened. Regret or rejoice. Grieve or laugh together or independently of each other. The difference between saying you tried your best and you're horrible is empathy. The smallest of your choices are remembered by the experimental insight system, which ana analyzes your character and offers you personalized, interesting viewpoints and alternative outlooks on the things you've said and done, recontextualizing your experience both in and out of game. Narrative and dialogue. There's a there's kind of a hidden message in this Steam page. Give me a second here. Um, some of the some of the letters in the description of the game is bolded. So we've got A A M uh, A M A A M A G A M A G E A M A 
A M A G E. That's image. No, a, a, a match. Uh, A M A G E A. Another E. T H W. Not sure what, we, what we've got there. Amogus. <laughs> oh man. Um. All right. Let me see. I don't think I have anything else to feature. Um. So I think we're gonna move on to Little Misfortune. Hopefully, hopefully without any uh, fire alarms. <laughs> 